Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and give praise and thanks to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. Go ahead and bless his name. We extol you, King of all the ages. One generation will declare your praise to another. You reign eternally, unquestionably King. Go ahead, give him thanks. Let this come from the depth of your heart to our King, our Maker, the ruler over the nations. Father, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you. Majesty, we bless you. We bless you. Go ahead and thank him miraculous manifestations of his hand the doings of the Lord in the midst of his people thank him in advance for that which he will be doing in your life tonight hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I want you to ask the Lord to give you a very definite visitation tonight Father, there are many people who have come gathered in your name, but visit me this night. Go ahead and pray. Visit me. Give me a visitation like you did Sarah. Give me a visitation like you did Solomon. Give me a visitation like you did Gideon. Give me a visitation like you did Hannah. Give me a visitation like you did the woman at the well. Give me a visitation like you did Nicodemus. Give me a visitation like you did Paul. I cry for a very definite visitation by your spirit. Are you praying? For everyone that asketh, receiveth. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, speak to our hearts tonight. We have come to hear, we have come to receive, we have come to be lifted, to be elevated in the spirit, we have come to be enlightened and to be empowered. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will find by your spirit unrestrained access in our midst, and we pray that you will bless, you will heal, you will deliver, you will transform. And to Jesus be all the glory. Amen and amen. Can you greet one or two people and then please be seated. Tell them God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen and amen. I want to appreciate everyone. Um, for your commitment to learn it is true that without vision the people perish but it is equally true that without people the vision will not come to fruition every god ordained vision is god dependent and it is also man dependent hallelujah the bible says the lord gave the word great was the company of them that published it Tonight is another opportunity to be radically transformed by the power of his word. I have taught you here that God's method has always been by his word. He lifts by his word. He answers prayers by his word. He exalts by his word. He promotes by his word. So when the word of the Lord comes to you, then you know that the coming of that word has brought the beginning of a new season perhaps the end of another one and this means that when the word of god is about to come you must pay rapt attention so that satan does not distract you and rob you of your portion hallelujah praise the name of the lord i truly believe that tonight's teaching will radically transform everyone I have told you here that I'm committed to saying that week in, week out, when you are gathered here in the name of the Lord, that we receive wisdom, superior wisdom, illumination from God 
we learn the ways of the kingdom we are prepared we grow in the spirit by light and then we are prepared to live victorious christian lives and uh, let me remind you again like i've stated times without number that the end of the journey of the believer with god is glory hallelujah that when you begin your walk with god you must have this at the back of your mind that God's intent for you is not just that you will serve him, but that your life becomes a manifestation of the glory of God. The end of the believer's life, if you allow the word of God to mold, to build, to culture, to train you, if you submit to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, it does not matter your current level. And believe me when I say this, the end of your life is the glory of God manifest the glory of God revealed that means you're coming here week in week out is your commitment towards this transformation project your coming means that you are saying I agree with you oh God that you keep transiting me you keep building me until the glory of God is revealed in experience through my life may that be your encounter tonight shout a believing amen Hallelujah. And tonight's teaching is also a build up from last week's teaching. I've been sharing with us keys that help us survive and thrive even within this end time. The word speaking concerning the sons of Issachar. He said there were men that had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. It is terrible to be in ignorant. In ignorance as far as as the ways of God is concerned. So I want you to fasten your seat belts tonight and please lend me and lend your destiny a rapt attention. And for those of us who are connecting from across the globe, you will do well to invite your loved ones and tell them you need to hear what apostle has to say by the spirit. You need to sit down and learn by the spirit of God and the Lord will do us good in Jesus name. Lessons from an overcomer lessons from an overcomer i want to teach you destiny defining principles today from the lens of scripture and from the lens of those who have overcome we are gleaning from the pain of many today we are gleaning from the tears of many we are gleaning from the experience of many for many of you what you are hearing tonight will save you the next 10 20 years of your life believe me what you are hearing tonight perhaps will save you your lifetime and for many of you you will redeem time and gain mastery over destiny you believe that shout a loud amen, amen. lessons from an overcomer three scriptures hmm. revelations chapter 3 and verse 21 to him that overcometh i will grant to sit with me in my throne even as i also overcame and i am sat down sat down with my father in his throne not to everybody to him that overcometh scripture number two Second Timothy chapter 3, we're reading 14 down to 17. Lessons from an overcomer. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned. 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture, which is able to make thee wise. Take note, unto salvation through faith that is in jesus christ 16 now it says all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable take note of that expression scripture is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness to what end that the man of god may be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works are you ready for the third scripture proverbs chapter 1 beginning from verse 1 reading to 5 
the proverbs of solomon the son of david king of israel the intent of the book to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding verse 3 to receive the instruction of wisdom it says justice and judgment and equity to give subtlety to the simple and to the young man knowledge and discretion the final verse it says a wise man will hear and increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel may the lord grant us grace and understanding in jesus name we live in a world where we admire victorious people we admire overcomers in sports in music in the academia in politics every time you see a life and an individual who has succeeded notably in any area usually they are worthy of our admiration we have names that we call them for those of them who are on social media in our social media age we usually would look for their pages and like and follow them religiously hoping to glean wisdom hoping to be inspired generally speaking in our world success at any level inspires success at any level provokes people to want to replicate that result hallelujah if someone stands here and he says i am a professor say of medicine and surgery a young aspiring doctor would usually be inspired just by the sight of that individual when you see a general in the army say a four-star general you know very very rare position a young man who is in the army will usually be inspired by that sight our world celebrates overcomers we call them all kinds of names sometimes we call them celebrities sometimes we look for the names that best you know fit our description of them it is a very wonderful thing to be an overcomer let me give you the definition to overcome means to confront to challenge and to prevail over this is what it means to overcome to overcome means to confront to challenge and to prevail over to overcome also means to gain mastery of you are called an overcomer to the degree to which you are able to confront to challenge and then to prevail over to overcome also means to gain mastery of hallelujah many years ago i used to listen a lot to this um genre of music called the music of the masters i mean those guys just play all kinds of things and they play as though they are not humans they can play the keyboard they can play whatever they use all kinds of skill i mean they, they stretch your imagination beyond the borders they are called masters they are overcomers spent years in learning and they have gained mastery let's define classically who an overcomer is i've written it down here and please write one who faces challenges or one who faces challenges and subdues or gains control over them one who faces oh my apologies let me let me just structure my definition one who faces comma challenges that's the appropriate expression and subdues or gains control one who faces comma challenges and subdues or gains control either over an enemy a condition or a situation i'll take it one more time an overcomer is one who faces one who challenges and one who subdues or gains control over an enemy over a condition over a situation this is known as an overcomer so the character of an overcomer is that you must be confronted with situations where you have to face them with courage and confidence you have to challenge them with audacity and then you subdue 
you overcome, you gain mastery over. May that be your testimony from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Among the many things that makes masters professionals or overcomers as we call it admirable are the many stories that they have from their vantage position now. Are we following now? You will never have someone who has truly overcome who does not have a story or a lesson, something to tell you about their journey. In fact, it is often said that the secret of men is hidden in their stories. Am I right on that? That when you are listening to a great man, one who has achieved any kind of feat or stride in life and destiny, usually in the midst of the stories, the stories convey their pain, they convey lessons, they convey all kinds of secrets that if and when you understand, you are able to reproduce their results. Among the many things, I repeat, that we gain from overcomers or victorious people is not just the results that they now enjoy. It is the lesson and the stories, the gems that they have found on the way. Can I tell you, some of these men to become overcomers, they had to sustain scars and injuries. Some of these men, for them to become overcomers, they made mistakes. Some of them to become overcomers, they went through things that they might not want you to go through again. It is profitable to listen to an overcomer. There is time redemption when you listen to an overcomer. Capacity to redeem time. Capacity to subsidize the price that you have to pay as far as destiny actualization is concerned. You are about to learn a few destiny defining principles from the life of overcomers. Overcomers in scripture, overcomers in our world today. I have been able to, by the Spirit of God, to distill for you years and decades of pain, years and decades of blood, years and decades of tears from people, some of them dead, some of them alive, some of them captured in scripture to the end that God will grant us the wisdom that he will reveal to us through these principles the strategies that empower the saints to survive and to thrive. Are you ready? Lesson number one. The first lesson that we learn from an overcomer is that ignorance is not a demon. You do not solve the problem of ignorance just by casting it out. You go for knowledge. Lesson number one from an overcomer, ignorance is not a demon. The problem of ignorance is not solved by casting it away. There are spirits that enhance an ignorant person's remaining in that state. But essentially, the starting point for all men is ignorance. All men start in ignorance by default. It is not a negative condition until it is allowed to prolong or be prolonged in your life. Are we together? Yes. It is the remaining of ignorance that makes it a problem. All men begin their journey in destiny in ignorance, including Jesus. The Spirit of God drove Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 to go and pray and to be tempted of the devil. But it was not the Spirit of God that drove him at age 13 to go to the temple. As an act of his will, he went to the temple and invested time. Aware of his ignorance, he began to do something about it. Jesus was not the only young man in his day, but he was one of the few who dedicated themselves to learn. Ignorance is not a demon. There are many believers who want a short-term, fast-fix solution to the issue of ignorance. And most church people, especially in Africa, just believe that with one prophetic declaration, age-long ignorance will suddenly evaporate out of your mind, leaving you with superior wisdom. It does not happen like that. The cure for ignorance is not just prayer. The cure for ignorance is not just deliverance. The cure for ignorance is the discipline to stay with light until light drives away darkness. Lessons from an overcomer. 
ignorance is not a demon many people today that includes men and women of God in ministry that includes family people that includes aspiring people in our world today are left at the mercy of their ignorance they continue to fail and to recycle pain perpetually bringing all kinds of flimsy excuses and justifications and many of them have invented all kinds of imbalanced strategies to deal with the ignorance first and foremost many will not even admit that they are in ignorance can i tell you a real miracle begins at the point where you are aware of your state of ignorance even if you do not know the way out yet that you are aware that I am in this state of ignorance already begins to put you in a position of victory for as long as you live I want you to learn and to know this ignorance is not a demon all men including the ones who you call overcomers started from a standpoint of ignorance are we learning? Second Timothy chapter 2 from verse 15. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. It says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Can you imagine that receiving an approval unto God as far as destiny actualization is concerned has a dimension of it that only study can bring. A workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth there is a relationship between laziness and shame the bible says study to show yourself approved and that in doing that there will be no need for shame proverbs chapter 1 please from verse 20 please be patient as i read while you learn wisdom crieth without it says she uttered her voice in the streets next verse she cried in the chief place of concourse and in the openings of the gates in the city she uttered her voice this is proverbs now how long ye simple the word simple there is the word ignorant will you love ignorance or simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge next verse it says turn you at my reproof wisdom is speaking behold i will pour out my spirit upon you i will make known my words unto you uh-huh because i have called wisdom knowledge and you have refused i have stretched out my hand and no man regarded me but ye have set at naught all my counsel and would not and would none of my reproof uh-huh I will also laugh at your calamity, he says. I will mock when fear cometh, the consequences of ignorance. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they will not find me. 29. It says for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the lord verse 30 they would none of my counsel they despised all my reproof therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices two more verses for the turning away of the simple or the ignorant shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them 33 but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil ignorance is not a demon ladies and gentlemen please hear me you want to actualize destiny and you want to live a victorious life you must learn to take responsibility by the spirit and to contend for high levels of spiritual illumination hallelujah another angle to this first point is that just because you are enlightened in an area does not cover for the darkness in another area every area must be uniquely pursued to get light you may have light in the area of healing but it will not bring you prosperity by default 
all the various dimensions of your life, you must pay attention to every one of them and to pursue light. Hallelujah. Therein lies the fallacy of short-term success. You can excel in an area and usually results have a way of flattering us because in the presence of results in an area, it is difficult to admit that you are ignorant in another area. After all, you have results. You may be an excellent preacher, but you may be a bad leader. Are we together now? And because of the results that you get in preaching, it will bring you to a point where it will be difficult to admit that you need to have leadership built in you because you judge by the sincerity of your priesthood and you will automatically assume that because I preach and people are blessed, it then means that I'm ex an, an, an exceptional leader. You can be a responsible father in terms of your willingness to help your children, but ignorant of the principles that make you a father indeed. Hallelujah. Dimensional success is dangerous because you will excel in one area and believe that just because of the excellence in that area, there is no need for improvement or development in any other area. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. Very profound scripture. The Bible says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Hallelujah. It is important for us to know that for you to excel in life, you must come to terms with the fact that getting light, light that empowers, the knowledge, the information that you need to rise and thrive, you will not be spoon-fed with it. You have to challenge yourself and rise to the occasion. It will take a long time for you to have knowledge. Listen, it took one day for the Holy Spirit to come upon the apostles, but it did not take one day for them to be transformed, to be prepared for that impartation. The ratio of impartation to transformation was three and a half years to one day. There was one day of Pentecost, but there was no one day of lecture. Many years of lecture. Jesus teaching them, helping them, allowing them to ask questions. When they were now prepared, I have taught you here, Koinonia, that the value of the anointing is that it comes upon a vessel that is enlightened and transformed. When you try to bring impartation upon a life and a vessel that rejects enlightenment and rejects transformation, you only wasted that impartation. It it will have no profit ignorance is not a demon this finance thing why is it not working the devil must be attacking me I told you that spirits are opportunists. They have found a loophole in your understanding and built a stronghold around it. I can tell you no spirit is as powerful as they look. It is the gap, the space that our ignorance has provided in their life. For as long as the demons find the vessel swept but empty, they will always call their kind and make the, the person's state to be worse than the first. When I found this, I made up my mind that anything that does not work in my life, I will not blame anybody. I will take responsibility by God and I will sit down. Remember my teaching um, last week? The first lesson we learned from overcomers is that there are people who take the responsibility to contend for light. How do you know light has come? By the absence of darkness. If darkness is still there, you do not have light enough. The ultimate test for the presence of light is the absence of darkness. Write it down, please. The ultimate test for the presence of light is the absence, the dispelling of darkness. Many believers are plagued with the cancer of ignorance. Ignorance about the ways of the kingdom. Ignorance about the laws of the cosmos. I hope you know that this universe was not designed by an intelligent God to just be run with, with, with blind ideas. There are exact laws, spiritual laws, but there are exact natural laws 
there are laws. You find these laws scattered in biology. You find these laws scattered in agriculture. You find these laws scattered in engineering. All those today we call scientists are men who have stumbled across the laws that God created to govern the activities of the cosmos. There are laws that control the realm of the spirit, but there are laws that control the earth. For instance, while the earth remaineth, it's not a spiritual law alone. It is a law that applies to all men. Now, there are certain principles that only apply to believers, but there are principles that apply to all men. They are the laws of the universe. My question is, how many of them do you not know? And how many of them are you currently a victim of? Lessons from an overcomer ignorance is not a demon that means everybody has a chance to as quick as your passion can afford you get out of a realm of ignorance you must take responsibility and say in the name of jesus i am tired of wallowing around this ignorance you came from a family where no one has risen no glory no beauty i can tell you for as long as you keep blaming people and hoping like we say in nigeria one day go better that is just a um, um is a wise saying that does not have any biblical basis it will not work Time does not change things. Time only reveals. Ignorance is not a demon. The day you begin to take responsibility over your life and over your destiny, obtaining grace and assistance from the Spirit, and you go through the labor of contending for light, you are now subscribing for your exit out of your realm of shame, out of your realm of mediocrity, out of the realm where nothing seems to be working. Behind everything that works is light. Light is the battery that powers everything that works. Behind every great business is an information that the owner of that business knows behind every great ministry i tell you sincerely there are secrets men rise and they stand upon the abundance of the secrets the mysteries and the principles that they have found there are laws that govern the anointing there are laws that govern leadership there are laws that govern influence there are laws that govern abundance there are laws that govern relationships there are laws that govern restoration. Are we together? There are laws that govern longevity. It is your assignment under God to find these laws by the Spirit. Can I tell you, and I say this with every sense of humility, happy are you when God plants you under a man of God who by sacrifice has distilled these laws and brings it cheaply for you. That is a real, he has brought um, he has subsidized the price that you have to pay. This is the blessing you get when you come to the house of God. That people have paid the price by the Spirit and through the sacrifice of alignment, the labor of mentorship, the sacrifice of adaptation to get these truths together, distill them and to communicate them with grace. Lessons from an overcomer. There is no overcomer who sits on the throne of glory in ignorance. There is a realm where ignorance is not permitted. The gate will not open. Did you hear what I said? There is a realm where ignorance is not permitted. Even the worst of men in that realm is still sufficiently ignorant or sufficiently knowledgeable. There is a realm where ignorance cannot pass beyond. It is up to you to make up your mind right now, listening to me here and across the globe, whether you are ready to remain. Did you know that regardless the prophetic word that comes year after year, regardless what resolutions you make year after year, in ignorance, your lot is already defined. In ignorance, I don't need to be a prophet to reveal what your tomorrow will be. Just show me the abundance of ignorance you have decided to keep and with the precision of an artist, I can paint your tomorrow. Not by word of knowledge. There are many people who their 10 years will look like today. In fact, worse than today. It is not prophesying doom. 
it is that the level of emotional attachment they have to ignorance will not allow them rise they are so attached to ignorance they dread the discipline of knowledge are we learning koinonia is quiet amen you came to church when I find out you are quiet, we will sing. I will get your spirit up and continue what I'm doing. Amen. Is someone learning? So imagine with me that there are two seats here on stage. One seat is for you. You are now seated there. And the other seat is occupied by a very old ancient man who is talking to you, giving you an opportunity to learn. This is what is happening to you today. The name of that man who is seated there is an overcomer. Whether you call him Jesus, whether you call him Paul, whether you call him Abraham, whether you call him whatever it is, there is one name that binds them all. They are overcomers. And they are letting us into their lives and into their scars. And the first lesson that they are teaching us tonight is that ignorance is not a demon. It does not respond to sentiments it does not respond to all kinds of prejudices. You must be willing and ready to contend for light. High level spiritual illumination is what cures darkness from your life. Lesson number two. Are we learning? What is the second lesson that we learn tonight from an overcomer? You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined you cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined you cannot have consistent results until your desires and your expectations are defined please underline the word defined Luke chapter 18, please. From verse 39 to 41. My goodness. Someone is being radically transformed. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more that he being blind Bartimaeus. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 40. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. Watch this. And when he was come near... Jesus, your Jesus, the overcomer, asks the man a question. What will thou that I should do for you? I am a compendium of limitless possibilities. But then my response to you will be at the instance of your defining what your desire is. The man said that I may receive my sight. The man would have said that you help to talk to the king for me that they should be giving me arms every day. Just because you see someone in a state does not mean they are willing to come out of it. Giving definition to your desires will coordinate the power of God to meet you at the point of your need. Lesson number two. You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. Mark eleven twenty four. My goodness, please pay attention to what you are learning now. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, what things soever ye desire, when you pray on those things, specific things, believe that you receive them and thou shalt have them. I will tell you why many people never become successful. I will tell you why many people never actualize great things in life. They have no definition over their desires. They have vague ideas. You ask an average person, what do you want God to do for you? They will say things like maybe general goodness just to show up for me. Or you ask them, what is wrong with you? The first assignment of every doctor is not treatment. is to diagnose what the problem is. And diagnosis can take a long time. Am I right on that? They will need to send you to run a test and the result can show multiple possibilities. Then they subject you to a more intricate test. 
the joy of the doctor is that he finally zooms down. People begin to rejoice over diagnosis, not just treatments. They are finally happy that we've known the name. The moment it has a name, you begin, your, your chances are high that you will be healed and you will survive when that sickness has a name. You ask any medical practitioner, the worst state any doctor can be in is trying to treat a patient whose condition has no definition. That is true for medicine. It is also true for your life. What kind of believer do you want to become? I just want to love God. That is vague. I just want to be great. That is vague. I hate poverty. That is still vague. I want to be rich. That is vague. I want to be a big man. Very vague. Ignorantly vague. Because a big man is, is a statement that was not even introduced by big men. Hallelujah. Are we together? You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. Giving definition to your desires is a miracle. I can tell you this. It is in this area that both religion and science and psychology, they come together. They all agree that your life will revolve greater when there is definition to your expectations. What do you desire? That I may receive my sight. When your desires are defined, you will know when the goals have been achieved. Hallelujah. Lord, bring increase. Lord, bring increase. What does that mean? How do you know your prayer has been answered? Lord, take away shame from my life. By what definition will you know shame has left? How do you know God has answered you? And how do you know the devil is stopping the prayer? Lord, let my destiny help us send for me. That is wonderful. But what is the definition? Now, we pray generally, and you hear me prophesy generally, but when it has to do with the life of a victorious one, an overcomer, ladies and gentlemen, there needs to be definition in your life. Most believers want to succeed, but they are totally at a loss as to what success is and the indices that they will use to measure success. I have helped you in this house and I will help you again that when you talk about success, there are about seven areas that if you do not excel in, you are not successful. Can I do a one minute recap for you? Number one, very quickly, please write it down. We are still on point two. Number one, your spiritual growth. The first area that you measure success in, you want to make progress, you want to advance, number one is your spiritual growth. Number two, mental transformation. You are successful to the degree to which you now adopt superior belief systems that translate towards a winning and a victorious life. I refer you to my message, the victor's mentality. The mentality of a victor. The second area that we measure success is in the area of your mental transformation. There is nothing called a billionaire madman. No. You give a madman one billion, you did not help him. He's not even aware because he's not in a mental state that is fine and healthy. Number three. The third area to measure success is in the area of purpose. And of course, you can call it your ambition, your career, whatever it is. Purpose and your ambition. That which you desire to do as far as life and destiny is concerned. Can I continue? The fourth area to measure success is your health and wellness. You are only successful in the kingdom to the degree to which you are healthy and you are well. Your physical agility and your wellness is a very, very potent index for measuring success. I'm teaching you this so that when you say, Lord, I desire to be successful, you understand the areas. Are you seeing that now? Your mind can cooperate with your prayer so that you can get answers and you will know God has answered you. Your spiritual growth and advancement, mental transformation, purpose and destiny, health and wellness. Number five, your financial well-being. Usually this is where most people zoom down to. When they are talking about success, they are really talking about money. 
financial well-being. It is true that in all your being successful, if you lag in this area, you are not wholesomely, you are not entirely successful. Number six, relationships. The sixth area that measures and defines your being successful is the quality of the relationships that you have and you enjoy in your life. You are as secured from an earth standpoint as the relationships that you have. Let me repeat myself again. From an earth standpoint, you are as secured as the relationships that you have. Number seven. The seventh area that measures success generally is fulfillment fulfillment and meaning meaning m-e-a-n-i-n-g meaning the area of fulfillment and meaning that you want to ensure that your life counts you want to be satisfied knowing that you are serving God and that you are becoming a blessing to humanity you cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined watch this if you have your roof leaking in your house do you know sometimes the leakage can start from one point or let me use a plumbing issue let's say you have you know a leakage from your pipe the water can flow say from your living room or from the toilet the bathroom and then it flows down to the bedroom it may even flow to other areas in in, in you know maybe even to your living room but when you are solving the problem you, it's not where the water is. You have to go back and find out where is the point from which that leakage started. Is the longevity of that leakage that caused that damage to even reach your living room. Do you understand what I'm teaching you? So you have to go past the living room and then you finally, you get to the point where you say, ah, so it's from maybe the toilet or the sink and then you start to fix it there. When you fix that one, you can clean up the water that is there and you know you have done a good job. But when you leave the part that is still leaking and try to mop up the water in the living room, you only wasted your time. Am I right on that? There are many, many people who are just trying to mop up problems, bringing temporal solutions. They have not yet brought definition to their desires. There are believers who want empowerment from God but they do not have a clear definition. We think in pictures. That is the reason why you hear a lot of people will tell you that they have images that represent their future. Images. Now, when that is done within the limit of scripture, that is fine. Are we together? Now you understand why the Lord granted me that instruction to get the map of Abuja, get the map of Nigeria, get the map of Africa and get the map of the globe. Why will God ask me to do that? I'm in a season of intense prayer, praying for the next level of koinonia and God does not even start revealing to me where we will be meeting. He just says, you go and get the map. No wonder he told Abraham, he said, come out, count the stars. I want, you are asking me to bless you, but there is vagueness. There is no definition. I need to help your imagination so that I can release for you. So you can understand what I have in store. He said, count the stars. And he began to count and he was lost. And he said, so shall thy seed be. Finally, verse 6, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. There are things God wants to do. This is why, Baha, my dear people, Believe in the power of dreams and visions. It is God's way of helping to prepare your mind. You see, when you have seen something and you've held it in your imagination, it becomes difficult for the devil to steal it from you. So a young lady who just comes for koinonia receives a prophetic word from a poor and a mediocre family. She goes back home and here's the spirit of grace. You sit down. And you see yourself standing in a place, in a crusade ground, ministering for instance, or running an NGO, a multinational NGO, blessing people. And you wake up, I'm still in that room. I'm still on the ground. You are not there. You've left that place. It's just that you are not aware. You don't know the power. Listen, I'm not just playing with your mind. No, that you were able to receive that, you are not in that condition again. I'm telling you this. 
It's just that it will take time for your body to get where your mind has gotten to. But I can tell you at that instant that you received it, the moment Mary said, be it unto me, according to your word, she became pregnant. Hallelujah. Those consultants who teach people how to plan, they usually teach people, for instance, in the area of finances. When they want to help you, they will say, go and calculate. How much does it take to run your family per week? And you will see the person who is praying and crying and shouting, saying, I don't know. How much is your chance, Kufi? The last time I know, I think it's around 70 or 80, around that. And you cannot rise that way. How much is your rent? I don't know. How much is your transportation? I don't know. God help me and God say, what do you want me to do for you now? How can I touch a destiny helper to help you? That is the reason why if God gives such a person one million, two million, he will rejoice and roll on the ground even if here and in two weeks he's back to his, or his former self again. Because there was no definition of desires. There will always be wastage of opportunities when there are no definitions to your desire. Hallelujah. I truly believe, watch this, that part of the reason why Joseph excelled was because he prepared. He knew that based on the law of time and chance, one day I will stand before the king. It may take long. There is no guarantee. No date was given to me. And I'm saying this prophetically to someone. Do you know you are closer to meeting your helpers? Are you prepared? Have you imagined yourself in the boardroom? Or do you want until the day God now opens the door, you now disgrace yourself and your destiny as a result of lack of definition? Many years ago, let me tell you, many years ago, a younger, much younger version of myself back in our family house in Joss, I used to go to our boys' quarters in the night. You've heard my story. I will carry a mic, a stick now representing a mic, and I will be shouting at the back of that house, preaching alone. I never knew that my mom once peeped at me and she saw me doing it once. And I will sense the power of God. I'm preaching. That's koinonia there in the bush. It's true. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Let me sincerely admit to you, if you do not have a definition for your desires, it will never come to pass. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. Oh, I'm going to be a great man of God. Do you have individuals that represent where you are getting to? Oh, I'll be greater than anybody. Be like them first, then you can be greater than them. Some of these foolish and blind strategies that people bring is the reason why they don't rise. They will tell you, I'm going to be greater than, have an idea. I'm going to be a great crusade person. There are a few people that can be a starting point, priming your creativity. Reinhard Bonke is there of blessed memory. Billy Graham is there of blessed memory. At every level, there is someone who can relate to your desires. Lessons from an overcomer. Are we learning? You must give definition to your desire. You will see someone who is in a one room, but he has already given an architect, an architect friend. He says, help me draw a three bedroom flat. And the man said, well, I will draw it all, but I know you are wasting your time. No. And he will draw it and write it there. Or some persons will spell their goals in the name of Jesus by the end of 2023. I should be worth at least 10 million naira. May not be too much at whatever level. Someone may laugh at you and say, just that, no problem. Allow them. You just keep dreaming with God. In the name of Jesus as a man of God, I should have the privilege at the end of the year. I should be serving his grace to these people and this region. Planning is powerful and there is no planning without deploying your imagination. Listen, I want you to respect what you are hearing. Believe me, even from an intellectual standpoint, you will not hear what you are hearing without paying a price. I assure you on this. Ask any consultant and any intelligent person, what you are hearing for free is what people will pay tens of thousands of dollars to travel for seminars to listen to. I pray and hope that you respect it. Lesson number two from an overcomer is that when there is no definition to your desires, 
there is no sustainable success. Let's rush. Are we learning? Lesson number three. Are you ready? People are not really affected by what happens to them. Listen and then you write. People are not really affected by what happens to them. They are affected by the meaning they give what happens to them. It is not what happens to people that affects them. It is the definition and the meaning they give what affects what happens to them that causes the pain and the despair. Let me say it again and then I will, I will, I will dictate it for you to write. People are not really affected by what happens to them. They are affected by the meaning and the definitions and also the interpretations that they tie to what happens to them. Please look up. Don't worry, you will write. What is the difference between falling in church and falling in a restaurant? Young lady, as I'm teaching right now, if the power of God carries you up and lands you down, you get up rejoicing. And even your seat may say, my God, he has visited you. Versus you fall down in a restaurant. You fell down. You, the worst fall may even be here. What is the difference? It's not the falling down. It's the meaning that you attach to that experience. That's what causes depression. That's what causes joy. It is never what happens to you that has that power to destroy you. You have associated happenings around your life and you have connected them to certain meanings. There are events that mean failure to you. There are events that mean weakness to you. There are events that mean oppression to you. What is making someone cry is another person's desire. Someone will cry and say, I got only one million. It's a meaning you connected to it. That based on your level, one million is a testimony of a failure. Whereas for someone, that one million, he would talk about it as though, I mean, he just got to heaven. Now you write, please. People are not affected by what happens to them. They are affected by the meaning they connect to the happenings. People are not really affected by what happens to them. They are affected by the meaning that they connect to those happenings. This is the reason why comfort and counseling is powerful. What happens when you are comforted? What happens when you are being counseled? Your perceptions are being changed, that's all. The situation is not being solved necessarily. It is your perception. For instance, if you lose a loved one because of the pain, or let's, let me use something more, more bearable. You lose a job and you get angry and angry and someone sits with you down and says, do you know, perhaps the Bible says all things work together for good. Is that true? Watch what is happening to you now. The person says, I know the story of someone who lost a job and did not know it was a springboard to the next level. At the end of it, the person who was crying 10 minutes ago is now suddenly rejoicing. Did you give the person a job? No, you change the meaning associated to that situation. Can I tell you, when you learn this principle, you can laugh through storms. What happens when you make a video and you have only two likes or two follows? Why do you cry? Abba, all of this, can you imagine? I suffered to preach this message and only two people. Are you sure it was only two people? What if the first click was a congregation listening to you? But you have, there is a meaning. People are not really affected by what happens, I assure you. Why do you hate to let people know that your father, with all due respect, maybe is some person doing some menial job and you lie and call him your uncle? No, that's my uncle. My real father is abroad. Why are you telling that lie? It's not necessarily because you're a bad person. There is a meaning. You feel that when you reveal the true status of your father in that lowly estate, it may affect people's perception about your self-worth and you will lose your sense of significance. That means 
a secured believer is one who redefines the meaning that you have associated to many things and with many things in your life. Hallelujah. Are you learning? It is truly not what happens to you that destroys you. I mean, you just called me Joshua Selman, not Apostle Josh. Do you know who I am? What is the meaning of that? Perhaps, maybe from that culture, they feel it's okay to just say Joshua Selman and you have saved me. You will soon know now that God called me. All that complaint is simply because Apostle was missing? No. It is a meaning you have connected to it. There are people who are so insecure that even if it's a little child that taps your leg and says, Uncle, they will slap him because they are used to respect. How dare you tap my feet, this little boy? And they slap the boy and say, you don't know who I am. Why will a man pound on his wife, slapping her and saying, do you know I'm older than you? It should be obvious. Why would the woman revenge back and say, you will, you, will, you, will, you will stay without food this night? And all that drama is happening. Do you know at the end of it is simply that there is a, an oscillation. They are stinging their ego and simply because of the meaning. Meaning. Lessons from an overcomer. Number three. We are not really affected by what happens to us. It is the definition and the meaning that we associate. So because of this, meaning and definitions, another word for it is called ego. Ego is an industry. There are businesses that are literally built out of this deficiency in men. Are we together? Yes. If you watch me and I come down from a car and it's a nice Jeep or some Lincoln Navigator or something, like, that's right. But if I come out from maybe a Gulf or somewhere, you now say, no, 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 now this should not be. There are people who stand behind aircrafts. They have never entered and may never enter soon and snap in front of it and just say to God be the glory I just arrived. Why? No, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm not trying to be sarcastic, all right? But why do we go through this pressure? Why do we go through all of those kinds of things? That house you see is my own. In fact, uh, I don't want to say much. And then we wrap up everything and just say to God be the glory. But the truth is that we hope that by some meaning, even if it is by falsehood, we will earn respect. Are we together? People will believe that, oh, we are serious people, maybe we are wealthy, and so on and so forth. Can I tell you, when you learn to give things proper meanings, offense will be minimized in your life. The direct consequence of violating this principle is that you will live a life in unnecessary pain and offense. Someone can be looking at you and thinking about his rent, and you will think the person is eyeing you. I've noticed that this person is eyeing me and honestly, the person is just, you know you can be looking at someone and you are not there. The person is thinking of what explanation you will give the landlord and you are there misunderstanding the person and looking at the person through the lens of your insecurity. Can we do number four? Number four. What lesson do we have to learn tonight from an overcomer? Is someone becoming wiser? Are you ready for number four? <laughs> All right, so let's go. You need encouragement slash motivation to start anything, but it takes discipline and endurance to be consistent. You need encouragement slash motivation to start anything, when you're about starting anything, what you need is encouragement and motivation. But it will take discipline and endurance to be consistent in life. The secret to starting is motivating, motivation. But the secret to remaining and to be consistent is discipline and endurance. Discipline and endurance you need encouragement and motivation to start anything a business a ministry a home you just need encouragement 
But everyone who has stayed in any field of success will tell you that you get to a point where you need beyond motivation. It will take discipline and it will take endurance. And talking about discipline, there are two dimensions to discipline. Number one, there is the staying power. It's called discipline. Number two, there is the ability, the power of restraint. You need both. You are not disciplined if you do not have, number one, the staying power. The ability to continue even if alone and then number two the ability to say no to many good things you need encouragement and motivation to start anything in life but it will take discipline and endurance Believers, please listen to me. This is a very profound point. Most people think that those who today we call overcomers, champions in the spirit and in destiny, that it was motivation that took them all through. I, I disagree totally. Go and ask any champion in any field. There are times that the kind of challenges you have before you, motivation will not solve it. You need the staying power to continue even if you do not know the name of what you are doing. Motivate me to get to Lagos. You can encourage me when I start. Say by road. By the time I am seven hours, don't motivate me. You are wasting your time. Pray for me for the staying power to remain in that car till I arrive. Are we together? We have a world that is so in need of motivation. And motivation is important, don't get me wrong. It helps to prime you to start. But there are times you will need to stay alone and say, though he slay me, I will still trust him. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Many people lack the staying power. It says, and so... After he, the he being Abraham, had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Abraham did not just obtain the promise because God said he would. It took patience, it took endurance. Can I tell you the truth? For some of you, by reason of what I'm saying, God is telling you, go back to what you were doing. It is still my will. Stay there. It will not magically, you know, we have this idea that because you are in the will of God, the results will happen overnight. No, sir. There are times you will cry, you are still in the will of God. There are times it will not make sense, you are still in the will of God. This stubborn child, was it a cause to get you? He's still a pastor, train him. Endure, endure, endure. Hallelujah. <laughs> A gentleman heard that I prayed for 72 hours and you know these guys who get motivated and that's wonderful it's good to inspire people the guy now sent a text that he was going to you know go past he said he, he, he challenged himself <laughs> that you go past you know 72 hours and of course uh, there are many ways to learn many ways to learn are we together <laughs> you know when you hear it you think it's just easy what is there I assure you by experience by the time you pass four or five hours there has to be a grace that carries you through there is absolutely nothing that will motivate you about that experience again if you don't know this you are not a person of prayer even if the Holy Ghost is shaking all the chairs in your room I assure you, it is discipline that will drive you through. Are we together? Say discipline. Yes, sir. The staying power. For somebody, you are about to veer off the path of destiny. Whereas the path you have taken is the right path. You just need to remain. If you are traveling again, in my example, from Abuja to Lagos, even if by air, it will be unwise after 15 minutes to start shouting at the crew members or the pilot to say, I thought that this flight is supposed to be a fast one. No, you will have to endure. How do you endure? Sometimes you do nothing. Just sit down till you arrive. Just sit down. There are times you have to drive if you're the one driving or fly if you're the one, the pilot in charge. But there are times that you do not need to do anything. It's called the staying power. The ability to remain until the law of process runs its course in your life. 
Those who are good in the kitchen, you know this. There are times you mix everything. There's nothing else to do. Just close the pot and wait. Have you tried to taste food when it's on fire? You just want to pick the piece of meat by force. You know what it does to you? Because of impatience, you will burn your tongue and get, you may even, out of shock, you may push the whole food down. That's what happens to people. Impatience has cheated many people from actualizing their destiny. Just wait 30 more minutes. The food is yours. <laughs> Are we together? You can roam around the kitchen, but wait. You can be hungry, but wait. Watch videos of food, but wait. Once the meal is ready, they now serve it beautifully and you can sit down and take your time to enjoy your meal. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to wait. I receive grace to stay. I receive grace to stand. I receive grace to be disciplined. Do you know that one million is one plus one plus one plus one plus one million? There are many people who want to save and their target is two million naira. When they get to 700,000, they get angry one day and say, look, it's only when I'm alive I'll get to two million. And they convince themselves of all kinds of things. And usually they keep the money where they will not even see it. So they just reach their hands and pull out whatever is there. One day you place your hand and not find anything there. And you say, who stole? No, it was carelessness and indiscipline that finished that money. Just because you do not know what you did with it does not mean you did not use it. And for people, they will say their money is disappearing. Now, there are real cases like that. But in most cases, it's a lie. It's just the carelessness of the individual. You need encouragement and motivation to start. But it will take discipline. It will take endurance. It will take endurance. Listen, I wrote here, you must learn to say no to many good things if you desire greatness. We have been taught that you only say no to evil things. No. There are many good things in your life you must sustain the courage to say no to. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. Rearranging everything in obedience to Christ. Remolding everything in obedience to Christ. That's what he's doing. Rearranging everything in obedience to Christ. Hallelujah. Have you seen someone running a race? A real race, say a finals. Some marathon and then while they are on, say maybe they just have two or three more turns and they are done. And someone just dangles some ice cream and says listen remember you like ice cream is ice cream wrong no but with respect to what you are doing it is a distraction can i tell you if the devil uses evil things to get you and you resist it he will use good things the most important thing is that you go down whether by good or evil there is a tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil both good and evil are connected to that tree and it has one assignment to destroy you there are many things in your life it's not just about good or bad it's about wise and unwise there are many things that may be good but may not be wisdom for you with respect to the making that is happening to you is someone learning in obedience to christ stay in obedience to christ in obedience to christ bring in my life in obedience to christ so you must learn from an overcomer that the great are people who master the art of staying even if in their tears. When a woman announces that she's pregnant, usually people celebrate her and say, wow, especially if she's trusted God for a while. People can say, this is beautiful. We're happy to know this. Five months, six months, and you find out that no matter what you say, it doesn't bring that laughter it brought at month one and two again. 
Because at that point, what she needs is not motivation. The staying power. She will complain, but the baby is still there. She will argue, I her husband, but he's still there. Until she finally gives birth. And everybody comes to rejoice. And sometimes she can even say, this is the last time. And then, see that now. Is someone learning? Getting angry that there is nobody encouraging me is a joke. They encourage you when they were launching and cutting the scissors of that pharmacy. Now that no one is buying the drugs, now that people are not coming, you do not need motivation. You need encouragement by the Spirit. And sometimes it does not come just by saying go forward. It is discipline. Remain. Remain. Don't give up. Remain. This one is beyond motivation. It's beyond positive speaking. You just need to stay until it happens. I'm praying for someone who is weary and weak in ministry, in life, and in destiny. As a parent, as a student, it looks like you have stretched yourself and you have gotten to your wit's end. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, the staying power, that engracing that causes men to remain until they manifest, may it rest upon you now. May it rest upon you now. May it rest upon you now. Please sit down. Are you ready for number six? The sixth lesson, number what? Five. Thank you for following. Okay, so number five. Hmm. Do not be hasty with words or with commitments. Do not be hasty with words or with commitments. Think, pray, and seek counsel before making destiny-defining decisions. I'll take it again slowly. Do not be hasty. This is the fifth lesson we learn from an overcomer. Do not be hasty with words and do not be hasty with commitments. Put that down first. Do not be hasty with words and do not be hasty with commitments. Think, pray, and seek counsel before making destiny defining decisions. Think, pray, and seek counsel before making destiny defining decisions. This is a profound truth. Do not be hasty with words. Do not be hasty with commitments. By the grace of God, I've studied many successful people, especially within the body of Christ and in ministry. I found out that the older they get, the more they place value on their words. Have you noticed that people speak faster when they are younger? The aged treasure their words and sometimes they can be silent for very long. But in their silence, they are processing a lot of things. Young people are full of zeal and they can shout and say a thousand words and then find out they made a mistake they cannot recall again. Do not be hasty with words. The Bible says even a fool when he is silent is regarded wise. Many of us today have committed ourselves in lives and things and people to our pain because if only we were a bit patient, we would have made better decisions. Is someone learning? Here's what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 4. Did I get that right? I may have made a mistake. I've missed somewhere. My apologies. Do not be hasty with words or with commitments. Now, let me explain a bit on that. Listen, I wrote here that humans are largely interest motivated and self-centered. You need to know this. Humans are largely interest motivated and self-centered. That means in your entire lifetime, you can count literally on the palms of your hands the number of people who will come to participate with your life and destiny not expecting anything in return. 
Humans are largely interest motivated and self-centered. And nothing is wrong exactly with that, except for the fact, as you'll be learning further, that because humans are self-centered, in the presence of interest, everyone is a saint. Did you hear what I said? In the presence of interest, everybody is a saint. Meaning, provided I can see how I can benefit from this process, I will usually be at my best. You know people in truth, when there is an awareness that their expectations are disappointed, that's when you truly know who people are. Hallelujah. Do not be hasty with words. Do not be hasty with commitments. Like I said last week, there are people who have made commitments even in church and they were hasty to make those commitments. And it is now to their detriment and it is now to their peril. If only Herod was patient, he would not have made such a costly statement to tell the girl because you have danced. Ask anything up to half of my kingdom. How could he say that? And the lady went and consulted and they said, beautiful, bring on a platter the head of John. And because he was a king and he had spoken. There are many of you who made hasty statements. I will sponsor 10 of you from primary school till university and camera caught it. We live in a social media age today. After five years, someone comes to review your commitment for you. Sorry, sir, just to remind you that um, you are that philanthropist that we knew five years ago. You promised these people that you pay their school fees for the rest of their life. And now you are trapped in something you do not have the capacity to sustain. There are things before destiny defining decisions. Pray, think, and then consult with wise people. This is what made ordinary people to become overcomers. They were not hasty with words. When they brought a woman to Jesus, remember the story? A woman who was caught in adultery, the Bible says in the very act of it. And then the people say, hey, you claim that you are sent from God. This woman now has been caught in adultery. What do you have to say? Watch Jesus, the overcomer, the wise. The Bible says he sat quietly and he was writing on the ground. I'm sure the people were impatient, boiling, hoping to trap him. If I were Jesus, I'm sure they would have caught me immediately. Maybe that's where they would have even crucified me. Because of careless statements and you would not have died a savior. You would have died a loser. You see that? He kept quiet and he was writing. And then he looks up from the residue of wisdom. He says, he who is without sin among you should cast the first stone end of discussion what's the effect of such wisdom the bible says and they were convicted from the oldest what kind of word do you say that from the eldest to the last their conscience gets under arrest one sentence ladies and gentlemen from the oldest because the older you are the more you need repentance and forgiveness and so from the oldest to the youngest and the Bible says they left and the woman was standing alone there. And he says, woman, where are thine accusers? And then he said, hath no man condemned thee? And he said, go and see no more. That was it. There are many times that before you make the business decision, can I tell you, the moment people want to rush you, there is most likely deception around the corner. Let me give you this as a powerful secret. The moment, just sign, don't worry, you'll read it tomorrow. You just sign. Is it not me? You don't trust me again? Are we not from the same village? Tell them, please. Anything that is so, there are few things that demand that kind of urgency. Very few things. Maybe life and death issues, I can agree. But most cases are not life and death issues. Is just deception and so you sign something and they say thank you and you know sometimes when people are about to deceive they are polite they are very nice say don't worry we are very nice and as soon as you sign it and stamp it then you realize you just signed that for every other thing you will get 30% of it will go to that company whether you have left them or not can you imagine that 
a construction company comes and because they are trying to give you this you sign and stamp and they tell you if you leave the construction company and you sell the house to someone else to the tenth person that occupies the house you will still be remitting to the original person you didn't look at it you just signed it's after five years they will come with a lawyer and with your signature you will argue and argue and still pay in the name of Jesus whatever wants to rush you unnecessarily God gives speed but he does not rush men please listen to me God gives speed but it does not rush people unnecessarily. This is also true for ministry. Don't feel you are too anointed to wait for God and you commission yourself and crash land for nothing. And beware of those who deceive you and tell you, look, you are too anointed to be in this state. You are still a prayer warrior in the prayer department. If I had half of your anointing, I would be a general overseer. And you say, really? I even have an extra auditorium. We can start from there. Reminds me of what happened after our first crusade in this ministry. True story. We usually hold our crusades in collaboration with the PFN. And so after the crusade, it was a small crusade, but it was a, a, quite a phenomenal one. And did you know that after that, there were a few pastors, true story. They called me and they said, look, would you want to come and establish a branch of your ministry there? Say breakthrough. God is my witness. It looked very tempting. I mean, they were sincere people. They said, no, no, no. With this kind of result, I think you should be here. And I told them, I said, let me go to the Lord and inquire of him. I remember, I will use the direct words. The Lord told me if I did that, I would die. It was not causing me. I am looking from, from hindsight now. The level of ignorance that I had in my life at that time, if I had made a mistake of branching out, it would have been a disaster to my, to my, my peril. In 2013, I think it was, remember the vision that I saw a plane and it was written the name of the ministry, ENI. It was about to land in Abuja and it crashed. I knew that it was in the will of God to come here, but it was not the timing yet. I submit to you by the Spirit of God, and some of the people who did this are following watching now. There are people who have opened offices for me across a number of nations, and by the Spirit of God, I politely requested, I told them, please, I appreciate your zeal. I know that you are taking a step. I appreciate your initiative, but please, can you help me and close it? Can you look at open doors? and still know that this may not be God that opened it. I told you, even the prison, you enter the prison through an open door. It takes an open door to be in jail. So when a door is open, verify where you are going first so that you don't find yourself in a prison because even a prison has a door. Hallelujah. Do not be hasty with words. There are times you need to tell the people, all right, no problem. Please, can you allow me a day? Let me think about it. And sometimes in the place of prayer, the Holy Spirit will tell you, call so, 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 and so person. Call so, 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 and so person. There are many people with all due respect who have been scammed because they were hasty with commitments. You just saw some email, for instance. You know, most of these boys do all those things. You just won 20 million US dollars, 10 million US dollars. And the devil will program it immediately after miracle service. And you will just believe. You see, this is why ignorance is not good. God does not bless people that way. There is a system for growth. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. If you have not managed 100,000 with dignity, God will never give you a billion just like that. He loves you too much to kill you. Hallelujah. Have you ever been blessed in a way that you are now afraid of what you had? You suspect yourself, you suspect your wife, you suspect your children. The way you are behaving, people know something has happened in your life because you are not normal again. You are not used to that realm and you did not grow into it. Why is this door suddenly locked? What is your business? I say, ah, no, something must be there. I release grace upon you. To not be hasty in making commitments. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Joining associations, joining clubs, becoming part of whatever, relocating even sometimes, and then moving from one region to one region. Perhaps you were in a region in Abuja that was manageable, your budget was fair and fine on that, and someone just tells you, there's an opportunity here. I can support you for the first year. How about the other years? And you did not think about it. There are times you maximize moments. But can I tell you, you are never disadvantaged if you have to pray before you act. You are never disadvantaged if you have to seek counsel before you act. Even if in the process of praying, thinking, and seeking counsel, you miss that opportunity. I can tell you, God, for his name's sake, will recycle another season to honor you again. This is God for you. Hallelujah. Someone comes and says, I want to marry you. You don't find out anything. You don't pray. Uh, I want to marry you, but I'm coming from a family of witches and wizards. No problem. Look, I'm supposed to be the next priest. It doesn't matter. And you don't think, what am I getting into? Do I have the stamina to stand against the forces? Now, I, I can tell you can be victorious, but it's important to count the cost. I'm the only Christian out of 30 people. We are 43 in our family. I'm number 39. No problem. I still love you like that. And, and most people don't think. I hope you get what I'm telling you now. And then people make all kinds of rash and careless decisions. And they may have to spend their lifetime paying that price. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace. To pray, I obtain grace. To think, I obtain grace. To seek counsel before taking destiny-defining decisions. Hallelujah. I struggled with the Lord for three years when he began to speak to me about moving from Zaria. I wasn't sure whether I was going to Joss or coming to Abuja, but I just knew that the season had wrapped up. Now, there are times where you stay unnecessarily long. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying that it's important that you stay with God. And when you are convinced and you get a matching order, then you can take that step. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Do not be hasty with words. Someone calls you and says, we are looking, we want to raise one billion. And we need 10 people or 100 people who will bring 10, 10 million. We know you have the capacity. And you feel motivated by that accolade. And you say, I'm in. In fact, add me three people's spots. <laughs> and then eventually when you are not able to redeem it and they ask you why, you say, I was expecting some money. You would have been patient. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this, but would you just allow me, you know, let me discuss perhaps with my wife, my children. There are people who have sold properties their wives did not know. Their properties. The major property that God has put as a, a refuge for the family. True story. I remember someone who reached me one time. And they noticed that there were some members around their land. You know, going around and thanking God. True story. And, and the woman became... If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. They were going around singing praises around the land. And, you know, the woman was concerned. Do you know that one of their sons, you know, these boys, I'm, in the name of Jesus, may you have good children. This boy went, being that he was the only son, unknown to them that he had negotiated with a church. Now, I don't blame the church. He came as, as by his, his, his land his late father's land and he negotiated everything with the church gave them at a discounted price they were happy and they transferred money to the guy's account the mother did not know no other person knew and the boy was just happy they're not knowing so the woman the woman saw the people rejoicing it was their property they had paid for it but the gentleman just felt, if I tell these people, they will close my door. And most likely, you will be surprised. You will think because it's a lot of money to be used well. When the waster lands upon your life, even one billion will vanish like ten naira. I am telling you, have you seen people go down from grace to grass? Minus you in Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Number five, do not be hasty with words. Do not be hasty with commitments. Think. Pray. Seek counsel before making destiny-defining decisions. You can't call me and say, Apostle, should I wear a yellow cloth or a white cloth? No, that is not a destiny-defining decision. No, that's unnecessary. But there are certain destiny-defining decisions. Are we together now? Yeah. Are you ready for number six? Number six. I want you to listen to this one. In fact, I just felt stirred to tell you something I learned from Dr. Mike Mudok years ago. Still on point five before we get to six. Patience is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. Patience is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. Deception is an impatient trait. The moment you are patient, you are frustrated deception. The strength of deception is that you are impatient. The moment you make up your mind to be patient, it is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. Hallelujah. When the disciples came to Jesus, they were happy and all of them were doing their thing. Judas was there, Thomas was there. Jesus never spoke to them about the kingdom, about even them being apostles. They just kept following. One time they got tired and one by one by one, they first started fighting themselves. Then they started doing a lot of things. As soon as they caught Jesus, they disappeared within 72 hours. They were all lost, only John. Jesus resurrects and then he meets Peter in John 21. And he says, Simon by John, and lovest thou me more than this. Peter was caught to the heart. Peter was broken. And he realized that he was never truly following Jesus just because he loved him. He was hoping that he would find a place there. I advise you again, this is also true for leaders. Patience is a virtue that forces deception to reveal itself. Number six. Are you ready? The sixth lesson that we learn from the overcomer is concerning critics and naysayers. You want to hear this? Now, critics and naysayers, they do two important things that is needed for you to actualize destiny. Number one, critics and naysayers confirm that you are making notable progress. Critics and naysayers are a system of confirmation that you are making notable progress. Show me a man that is doing something worthwhile. If there are no critics and there are no naysayers, you are probably wrong. Critics and naysayers confirm that you are making notable progress. The other angle to it is that critics and naysayers can be used to caution you from decline and destruction. Critics and naysayers, the first part I take it again, confirm that you are making notable progress. But critics and naysayers, listen carefully, can also be used by God to caution you from decline and destruction. So critics walk both ways. They can become a system of confirmation helping you see and know that you are making notable progress but as uncomfortable as it is critics and naysayers can also be used as a system of caution to save you from decline and to save you from destruction this is where the tragedy of only wanting supporters around you comes the, and, and this is a weakness in leaders. We usually want those who sing our songs, those who sing our praises and say nice things around us. Unfortunately, if you are surrounded by only supporters, you may not arrive. You need both the ministry of supporters and you need the ministry of critics and naysayers. 
This is an uncomfortable truth, but it is wisdom that comes from overcomers. It is not unusual to have critics and naysayers. It is because you are doing something notable that has attracted their sight and their attention. And they can be used as a system of confirmation that you are making notable progress. But there are times that in the midst of the naysayings, in the midst of the criticism, look carefully. There may be a message there that can be God speaking to you. You may not believe me, but time will make you appreciate what I'm telling you. If you do not have an open heart towards criticism, you may not arrive at your destination. A man of God will say criticism is an opinion harshly, harshly explained. There are people who may say things in a wrong way, but the content of what they are saying is worth your consideration. It's just the presentation that was wrong. Are we together? Woe betides a leader, I tell you, whether you are a businessman or you are a man of God, and you are surrounded by only supporters who sing your praises. No. There are times God will allow the ministry of critics and even naysayers. It will challenge you. It will cause you to look at what you are doing clearer. You see that now. It helps to strengthen your conviction over what you are doing. Unfortunately, because the nature of criticism, look up please. If I have 100 people who are singing my praises and saying wonderful and lovely things about me and I have one person who says something negative. Usually from our psychological buildup, the one person, the criticism may seem to overshadow all the wonderful things. This is where maturity comes in. We call this in leadership emotional intelligence. The ability to stand before uncomfortable situations and still be at ease. Are we together? You need this. You need this. Someone can look at you and say, all these people, thieves, that's your car. And your tire is even about to remove. Maybe the person made a mistake, but look properly. It could be true that in the midst of the naysayings, is telling you that you may have an accident. Something is wrong with your tire. Hallelujah. I know you would want me to pray that you will never have critics. You will never have naysayers. You are trying to say that you do not want to be Jesus or Satan. Because either way, whoever you choose among them, you will still have critics and you have naysayers. There are people who hate Jesus with a passion. There are people like me who hate Satan with a passion. Are we together? Either ways. You will never live in a world where all men love you. It does not exist. But if you live in a world where all men hate you, something is wrong with you. It's true. All men cannot hate you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a proof that something is wrong. There must be someone honest and sincere. This is also something for you to work on. Critics and naysayers play these two sets of vital roles. Number one, they can help you confirm that you are doing something notable. You see, the thing about success is that the moment your result begins to speak, usually in our world, everything becomes wrong with you. The shoes you were always wearing now, there's a problem with that shoe. Are we together? Yes. Unfortunately, it is the cross that comes with success. And people must be trained to be at peace with being controversial, at peace with being misunderstood. It is the cross that you have to carry. <laughs> you don't like what I'm saying. Unfortunately, I'm not lying. What you are hearing is the truth from the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Apostle, but in my experience, everybody really loves me. I think I just have this thing about me that makes everybody loves me. Congratulations. Keep receiving prophecy about promotion and increase from me and watch what happens soon. One day you will be elevated to a position where all of a sudden the person who used to clap for you has a problem clapping now. 
the success is too much not within this short time uh -uh. the kite was you the marriage was you the house was you all right um you tell the person i think you need to adjust this so it's because you now bought a car it's not about good or bad it is a weakness in human nature are we together yeah the moment success becomes notable your chances are very high to be criticized you see politicians we talk about everybody you know sometimes in all fairness i know that we ministers of the gospel we receive our own too but honestly sometimes i pity politicians my goodness how those guys survive these things i don't know how do you survive walking and you are hearing someone insult you and sometimes people can insult you to your 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 this your that and you see the people just smile whether it was called for or uncalled for that kind of stamina is not worthy there are pastors who start and say i'm sincere i love the lord i mean what have i done unfortunately you don't have to do anything you just have to be alive and to make progress receive grace in the name of jesus Amen. to not be wounded by critics or naysayers you can convert your pain to something that becomes a springboard for your glory hallelujah when people criticize you look open-heartedly into what they are saying if you find out on careful examination that it is nonsense ignore it and move on but when you find out that there is something there for you to adjust with your life with your organization take advantage of it it doesn't matter how it came the most important thing is that the truth got to you and you become better by receiving it this is painful bar but please receive it because it will make you a champion when you look at any throne and you see an overcomer sitting there he used the ladder of supporters and the ladder of critics and naysayers all together he used them to climb to that elevated position may you have the strength to forbear even when people misunderstand you may you have the stamina to remain and to continue and not lose sleep in the name of jesus Amen. hallelujah praise the name of the lord i once had a man of god who said he was being criticized so badly he felt so bad and then he flew out of this nation to go and meet one of the fathers of faith and he was talking to him and he said sir i mean how could i i love my people with all my heart i've been serving them with integrity of heart how could they say this about me and he said according to him he said the father of faith was just smiling at him and when he was done the only thing he told him was that sit down let me tell you my story he had only gone halfway the story and the man said that's all right i've received my motivation if what happened to you you are still standing you mean you went through this kind of thing it is true that uneasy lies the head that wears the crown don't desire realms you are not prepared for honestly there are times you need to thank god for what you call delay because the forces that are waiting for you there if you are not built you will hate the throne because of what happens there Are we together? Critics and naysayers confirm that you are making notable progress in life, but they can also be used to caution you from decline and to caution you from destruction. I repeat one last time, you will need both supporters and critics. Unfortunately, you don't have to invite any of them. They come on their own. This is what makes it painful. No sane man will invite naysayers to their lives. The system was designed to bring both. So on one hand, they are calling you king of kings while they are eating the bread that was multiplied. Then a few weeks later, they curse you to your face and say, release Barabbas instead of this one. Let his blood be on our children. And Jesus was silent and he looked at them with compassion. He even said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do is someone learning by this teaching when you see anyone who you perceive to be an overcomer now you can respect them these are the keys painful keys you see painful keys so when you look at fathers of faith like our father in the lord daddy adeboe you imagine at 81 
turning 82 that's how old he has been criticized that's how old he may have been misunderstood but that man you see right there is a testament of endurance our father daddy onibogu who comes here all the time you see him he's turning 85 now 85 years old there are people who cannot survive two months in an organization they pray and they fast for that position they become a director and in two weeks they have 39 males full of insults they say i want to leave this office what is this yet someone was sitting there for 16 years and thanking god every sunday <laughs> one of the ways god helps you is by giving you your desires if you insist he will give you Lord, I must become a senator. What is there in, in taking care of a constituency? I know I can do it. And God says, be careful. I know all these people, they are just thieves and arm robbers. And God answers your prayer by helping you to win election. As soon as you get there, you discover that the amount of insults you get from those who are entitled alone. You want to leave that office. Have you noticed all those who become presidents, they live quietly? Have you noticed in Nigeria and across the globe? There is nobody... Who leaves that place just rejoicing and saying one mm -mm, quietly? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you seen many who work in certain organizations? By the time they're about to retire, they are quiet. They give thanks to God. Those who are waiting for that position, the people who are not even fighting, no problem. Just allow me to retire and go. And then the person who gets in there, he gets in there with zeal. Don't worry. In 10 days, I will transform this organization. And after two years, they look for every man of God they can find. Something must be going wrong. Nothing is wrong. That's how it is. That's how it is. That's how it is. Lord, you must give me triplets. I don't want just a child. And someone is saying, don't worry. Build, I want triplets. And God says, all right, answer her prayer. Then the triplets come. And you don't know what to do with yourself after two months. You call all your friends and say, sorry, we are busy. And they say, you are wicked. We say, no, no, no. Just do your thing. It's your cross. Carry it. I once listened to a message years ago. I think it's by T.D. Jakes or so. Can you stand to be blessed? Very powerful message. It takes stamina to sustain the blessing. Many people are praying for what is bigger than them. There are things you call delay, but it's the mercy of God to prepare you first so that what you are praying for does not become what kills you. Number six, koinonia for you. Number what? Seven. Are you ready? Ah, this one you need to listen to it in the name of Jesus Christ. There are three groups of people you must be aware of. It requires great wisdom to deal with these people. Please, I want you to write this and learn. Lessons from an overcomer. These are destiny defining principles. There are three groups of people you will always find around your life. It will take a lot of wisdom and discretion to deal with them. Otherwise, you will never arrive at the place of destiny. Are you ready? Number one, wicked people. Don't worry, you just write. Trust me. Are you ready? Let's talk about wicked people. Unfortunately, you may not be able to drive them indefinitely from your life. You will find them in your neighborhood. You will find them around your organization. And sometimes, as painful as it is, they will be too useful to be thrown away completely. Wicked people. I want to teach you something that you'll be grateful for. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 18. There are three groups of people. This is a lesson coming from an overcomer. A heart that devised wicked imaginations. Part of the six things that the Lord hates. A feet that be swift in running to mischief. Let's read Proverbs chapter 4, please. From verse 14 to 17. Wisdom is coming for someone now. In the name of Jesus. It says, Enter not into the path of the wicked, 
and go not in the way of evil men. Uh -huh. Avoid it, he says. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. 16. The Bible says, For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away until they cause someone to fall. Verse 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. There are people like that on earth. Believe me, I'm not just trying to be negative. There are people who have chosen to partner with the devil to be wicked. An evil heart it is called. There are wicked people in our world. There are wicked people around your organization. There are wicked people in church. There are wicked people in society. It is not within your power to drive them away. You have to sustain the wisdom to need them. Some of those wicked people are your superiors for now. You must learn to work with them. Some of those wicked people, are, they come in various forms. Believers must be educated to know how to deal with wicked people. Number two. The second of the three groups of people you must be aware of if you want to enjoy the life of an overcomer is selfish people. I will tell you the difference shortly, but please write. Number one, wicked people. Number two, selfish people. Who are they? Who are these groups of people called selfish? Now, please watch this. Selfish people are not necessarily evil people. They are just people who are indifferent about your state, provided they get what they are looking for. The character of selfishness is that it does not mind who is wounded in the process. The most important thing for a selfish person is obtaining your desire. It does not matter who dies. It does not matter who cries. It does not matter who is in pain. A selfish person does not see anything at their side. All they see is what they desire. They want it so bad, it does not matter who dies. They will betray family for it. They want it so bad. They will do anything provided it ends with them achieving it. Are we together now? A selfish person has no business harming you if there is nothing that becomes a point of conflict between both of you. You may even look like an ally for a while. Unfortunately, you will find these people everywhere. And I'm hoping and praying with all my heart that you are not one of those people. Number three. Are you ready for the third? Ignorant slash naive people. Write it down and I'll explain. Ignorant slash naive people. Naive is spelled N-A-I-V-E. Naive people. What does it mean to be naive? To show lack of consciousness. To show lack of experience. Are we together? To show lack of wisdom, lack of maturity, lack of judgment. There are people who are void of that level of maturity. They are called naive. A naive person is like a notebook that nothing has been written on. That's what makes them dangerous. Because they become whatever is suddenly written there. The easiest people to deceive are not wicked people. They are the deceivers themselves. They are not selfish people, but naive people. Now, let me tell you this. When Satan wants to destroy you, the greatest tool he needs is a wicked person. If he cannot find a wicked person, he will make do with a selfish person. If he cannot find a selfish person, he will make do with a naive person. All three can cause the same harm to your life. The difference is that a wicked person does his wickedness from a premeditated standpoint. So before and after your pain, they are happy. It was the plan. A selfish person like Judas is focused on making money out of Jesus, not with the intention for Jesus to die. Usually, when the harm is done and what they are looking for, they now have, then they have the conscience to regret. And they say, but I didn't want it to go this far. Have you heard of people who beat someone till the person died? And when they are in police custody, they will tell you the plan was not to kill the person. I arranged the kidnap of the person so that I will get 10 million. 
I didn't plan that the person will die. Wicked people, selfish people, ignorant or naive people can be tools that can become a disaster to your life except and unless you sustain the wisdom to live with them. Unfortunately for the rest of your life, you will be immersed in the midst of these kinds of people every day, including tomorrow, including forever. You would think that because Jesus was the son of the living God, he would not have these kinds of people around him. They were among his disciples, unfortunately. They were among the scribes and the Pharisees. They were among the members of his congregation. They were among the onlookers. And for the rest of his life on earth, Jesus, your Jesus, my Jesus, as the word of God, the word God incarnate, he lived in the midst of these people. Do you know, all these three people, I don't have the time to show you, I would have shown you that all these three people played a role together and made the death of Jesus possible. Even though we know now that it was the hidden wisdom of God, but these three groups of people, the naive people who said crucify him, let his blood be upon our heads. The scribes and the Pharisees who plotted it intentionally and Judas who wanted to make money out of Jesus, not to destroy him. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. If you do not sustain the wisdom <laughs> to walk with these people, you will get into trouble. Hallelujah. Especially naive people. I hope you know that the first fall was because of this. The woman you call Eve, Eve did not fall because she was a wicked woman. No. She was beguiled. I think it's 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. Did I get that right? Please give it to us. But I fear, that's right, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety. You see that now? So your mind should be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. Satan comes to a naive woman and begins to sell a narrative and sell an idea. How many good people have been turned into wicked people because they were so naive? It is the reason why believers must be trained and be mentored. There are people today who have been made to steal. They are not thieves. They were just naive. There are many young boys today that have been made to join terrorist groups. By the time they catch these boys, some of them are barely teenagers in their early adulthood and you would find out they were just indoctrinated with extremist views they were not wicked people by default they were not selfish people by default they were just naive uneducated inexposed people who became victims of the desire and the plan of others i'm praying for you whatever will make you a prey in the hand of satan and in the hand of wicked men i'm praying in the name of jesus may god not allow that thing come around your life tonight's message may not apply to everybody there are people who are too innocent to benefit from this message they have not grown enough to see the value of this message there are teachings that you need to archive you may not understand the implication till you rise beyond certain levels. Then you will rush and look at that message. There are those who this is a description of the season that they found themselves in. Hallelujah. Three groups of people. This one, it was a direct teaching that the Holy Spirit taught me. I did not read it in any book. These three groups of people. As much as possible, you keep praying and sanitizing your environment, but you have to get used to it. The cosmos is filled with a mixed multitude. Believers are just a portion of those on earth. Did the Bible not tell you not all men have faith? That means don't expect everybody to say, God bless you. You find God bless you in church, but you will not find God bless you everywhere. There are people who will honor you and say, Apostle, God bless you. But there are other people who are, who are vicious and wicked. There are others who are selfish. Unfortunately, this selfishness has spilled even to spouses, spilled into leaders. 
there are people who will not mind their entire families go down with all due respect provided they go forward there are parents who will not mind their children becoming prostitutes provided they return with money for them to eat the Lord will show us mercy in Jesus name can I still give you one more I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will never forget, Lord, your benefits. I'm reminded, I just raised that song because of a story that I heard, true story of a woman who arranged a kidnap of one of her loved ones by herself. Arranged that kidnap and was joining all the people to cry too. How many young boys today talk to armed robbers and say, my father has money in this other room, the second one. And when the armed robbers come, plus the boy they tell him to lie down too and he will lie down and you will think he's innocent by the time they carry the money is when is the is when the sharing formula goes wrong usually that's where people just scatter everything hallelujah i'm praying for you making reference to my teaching the seen eyes anybody who you have drawn to your life and is holding a sword you cannot see on your neck. I'm crying unto my God tonight. May God open your eyes to see this night. May God open your eyes to see this night. Listen, in this world, bar, if God does not show you mercy, you will be helping to hold the knife that will kill you and not know. I'm not, I'm not planting fear. This is wisdom. This is how life works. Whenever you see an overcomer, there are men who know this. That among all the people who say apostles are, yes sir, yes ma, your majesty, you are the greatest man of God in the world. Among those mixed multitudes, you must have the intelligence to discern that there are wicked people. There are selfish people. There are and naive people but like I taught you when I taught you on destiny help us I'm happy to also announce to you that there are sincere people do not think everyone is out to destroy you no don't allow your pain stop you from knowing that they are sincere people don't throw the baby and the bad water I need to balance this before we get to the last point there are sincere people I pray you become one of them that you become a breath of fresh air to someone and that the person will say from the day you came into my life you healed me from the pain of 20 years I never believed that there would be Christians who could be sincere but thank God for the gift of you I'm praying again for someone who came to church saying God please bring a good friend to my life I'm tired of people piercing me I've spent my life with injuries from betrayals may my God who is also your God send sincere people to you ah, can I tell you sincere people have a therapeutic effect when you find godly and sincere people you can sleep with your eyes closed and the thing about life and about god is one sincere pe person can bring the healing the healing that hundred people may have caused for you there are sincere people burn this at the back of your mind probably you are seated next to one there are sincere people. Don't draw a conclusion from your years of pain and betrayal, from your years of whatever. Oh, they cheated me in business. Oh, church people are terrible. All pastors are demons. They just, no, don't conclude like that. There are still sincere people. There are still sincere people. This is a prophetic message for someone. Are there still good men? Yes. 
Are there still good women? Yes. Are there still good parents? Yes. Are there still good politicians? Yes. Are there still good leaders? Yes. Are there still good men of God? Yes. Are there still sincere Christians? Yes. If you are not part of that sincere army, there is room for you to join. But do not conclude that all men are evil. You may be wrong. There are evil men. There are selfish men. There are naive men. But my goodness, there are men who are called gifts. When they come into your life, in a moment, believe me when I tell you this, this ministry koinonia you see has enjoyed the ministry of such men. There are a few of these men God has brought in my own life. Truly, you can call them consolations by God. And Adam had children. He knew his wife. He had Cain and Abel. What did Abel do for Cain to kill him? Cain killed Abel and was arguing with God. You can imagine the pain of that loss in the heart of Eve. But then the Bible says it beautifully. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore Seth. And the Bible says men began to call upon the name of the Lord. I'm praying for you one more time. Maybe to a preacher who has been badly wounded, betrayed by the people around you. Maybe some parents, you have trusted people and they went to your back and caused you pain. Your heart is bleeding right now. You've lost money. You've lost trust. You shared secrets about your life with people and they made a shipwreck of their destiny as a consolation. May my God send true gifts to your life. May my God send good people to your ministry, to your business, to your organization. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number eight, lessons from an overcomer. The eighth and final destiny defining principle that I want you to learn tonight is this. Define the most important things in your life. Not everything is worth dying for. Define the most important things in your life and I will guide you. Not everything is worth dying for. Please, don't kill yourself unnecessarily. There are things that are not worth dying for. Eighth principle, define the most important things in your life. Not everything is worth dying for. There are people who have died today. If they have the opportunity to come back, they will smack themselves at the cheek and say it was not worth it. I can tell you, everything in life does not hold equal value. You will never rise to the state of an overcomer and you would have wasted the lesson from your, your discussion with an overcomer if you do not know this. All great people, all champions in the spirit, in ministry, in organizations and in life, they know some of them have learned from their many years of pain that not everything in life is worth dying for. I have studied the subject of fulfillment myself and I have taught you a few teachings around fulfillment. I refer you to two of my teachings. One, what seekest thou? Number two, the law of seasons. But in my studying the subject of success and fulfillment, I found out at the end of my study and gleaning from the wisdom of fathers and champions indeed that there are only three things that are worth dying for. The most important thing in your life is defined as what you can die for, not what you are living for. The most important things in your life are defined not just because you are living for them, but that you can die for them. Anything you cannot die for is not that important. Don't let it give you heart attack. There are people today carrying self-inflicted health, health concerns because they have put themselves in positions where they do not, they have not defined the most important things. Can I share with you 
my perspective about the three most important things in your life. Number one, your relationship with Jesus. This is the first thing that is worth dying for, not just living for. It is worth dying for. If you can only live for Jesus, you are not serious. Genuine love is demonstrated in the ability to both live and if need be, die for a cause. Your relationship with Jesus, Mark chapter 8, 35 to 37. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Give us that scripture. Mark 8, 35. For whatsoever, whosoever will save his life, is that in your Bible? He shall lose it. But whatsoever shall lose, whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Reading to 37. For what shall it profit a man, the Bible says, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Ladies and gentlemen, your relationship with Jesus is the guarantee of your eternal destiny. It should be the most important thing in your life. It's not a preacher's manipulation. No. 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 I don't care what you have. I don't care what you do well in. If Jesus is not at the epicenter of your life, you have not defined your priorities right. Number two. What is the second thing worth dying for? Your family. Both biological and spiritual. Family is worth dying for. When Job lost everything in his life, the only thing that was left was family. Business could not stand the test of time. Reputation could not stand the test of time. Assets, as we call them, could not stand the test of time. At the end of his life, only one woman stood by his side. And even that woman stood there in her pain and she said, why do you hold on to your integrity? Job, you're my husband, but curse God and die. But at least she stood by him. Can I tell you, respect those who can see all your limitations and still love you for who you are. Not everybody has that patience. If you do not respect those who have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, and still love you the way you are, you are making a big mistake. Worth dying for, Jesus and the gospel. Worth dying for, family. Now, I know that a lot of people say all kinds of things about church, and they are largely right. Oh, church is full of hypocrites. Church is full of this. But can I tell you, the safest place you can ever be spiritually is the house of God. In the midst of all of all these stories here and there, you will still find people who love you in church. You will still find those who will cry with you in church. If you think I'm joking, lose a loved one or let something happen. And that's when you will know that many people are selfish. It is in church you will find someone who does not know you, but just seeing you cry can come to you and say, what is the matter? Can I help you? Don't get used to wicked people and think everyone is wicked. In church, there are good people. There are all kinds of vessels. Vessels of clay, vessels of wood, vessels of silver, and vessels of gold. Many years ago, I made a commitment with my life that aside being a man of God, one of my greatest goal in life is to be a shoulder for as many wounded people. Beyond being a man of God, my greatest testimony is not just that I, I was or I am a great man of God, but that someone, I'm not called to solve everybody's problem, but the, the much that I can do, not little, the much that I can do, if I can use my life to wipe somebody's tears, it may not be the best, but it was not the worst. You see, we're not called to do everything. 
when it has to do with being there for people you don't need ordination you don't need education you just need a good heart there are things you will need qualification to do showing love and kindness is not one of those educated or otherwise you can show love and kindness are we together wealthy or otherwise you can show love or kindness when it has to do with love and kindness gender does not necessarily matter age may not matter our world is full of bleeding people bleeding preachers i once saw a photo i think it was on youtube or so i can't remember what i was looking for and then i saw i think it was a, a, a graphic representation of something and a man who was holding on to his small son shielding the son from some something or so and there were all kinds of arrows on that man i said how true some of you never know what men of god go through the stress the pain the internal crisis having their own issues that they have to throw away this is true for preachers this is true for leaders and most times the church sometimes can be full of very ungrateful people they do not know that every sermon you hear comes from a standpoint of blood, tears, and sacrifice. How about leaders? You come to your workplace and you see ideas that keep scaling that organization, not knowing that someone lost sleep for that idea to come about. I'm praying for you that you will train your spirit to respect greatness when you see it. There is no gift of greatness in the Bible. Greatness is a cumulative of this journey. And tonight we are learning lessons from an overcomer so that you will become one yourself. Three most important things. Number one, your relationship with Jesus. Number two, your biological and your spiritual family. Number three, your assignment. John chapter 4 and verse 34. Jesus expressed it so beautifully. 434, John. He said, my meat, the word meat there means my nourishment. Almost as though my living, my remaining is based on this. The ability to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Can I tell you? Sometimes I live a very busy schedule. By Tuesday, we're in Cote d'Ivoire to Wednesday. We return back straight and I'm preaching at the Four Square Convention. Thursday and Friday morning, as soon as I'm done, headed from Abelkuta back to Lagos and then to Port Harcourt to still preach. That same night, one session with House on the Rock. And sometimes you are stretched to the borders and you keep asking why all this i can tell you the joy that comes to your heart when you know that your life is being a blessing cannot be contained with anything no amount of money will replace it no amount of fulfillment if you have not tasted this your life is not valuable enough there must be fulfillment beyond material things that you get and it comes by pouring yourself as a drink offering Someday if Christ tarries, we'll all not be here. Hallelujah. And like I would always say, the hymn writer says, Thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling, only to be remembered. We used to sing this song in the seminary and some will even cry. And then we'll go back and do exactly what the song was warning against. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your relationship with Jesus is worth dying for. Let me tell you what is not worth dying for. Fame. Money. Positions. Titles. Competitive achievements. They are not worth dying for. You will hurt yourself and pierce yourself with many sorrows and not even live to see yourself step into it. There are some people today who will not sleep. Why? because you saw a wrapper that someone wore please after koinonia go and sleep i release that grace upon you are we together there are people today who will not sleep because they checked their social media whatever and saw two likes two follows two shares 
and they say no this can I, I mean it can't be <clears throat> go and sleep please this person was my junior in school and is now dedicating his house no please go and sleep it's only when you are awake that you can go forward dead men don't go forward there is no progress to dead people are we together yeah there are things that are not worth losing sleep about please I give you a sound counsel a lesson from an overcomer learn to be contented while you aspire for great things at every level contentment is not mediocrity is gratitude celebrate seasons don't hurry out of them you will miss the season you are rushing out of now rushing out of now hallelujah with all humility there are things i cannot do again by reason of this supposed public or celebrity life sometimes i look back and i wish i had moments where i could smuggle myself maybe to just walk around literally can you imagine someone if someone sees you on the street even if you are just walking the person will kneel down there and say finally i know god i will not let you go they can literally hold your trouser in a junction and you know nigerians are people of faith they don't care if they tear the trouser and get their blessing to them is a good bargain <laughs> hallelujah i'm generally not the kind of person who likes all this um, oh you are this and i i usually don't like it but sometimes you get to a point where you can't hide again you can't do anything and most people get beguiled by those things when you see great people you usually admire you inspire and then for many people that that inspiration from them now becomes cancerous because you lose sleep i can't believe this is it not this guy that i even got filled with the holy ghost he's the one who now has a membership of 1000 people and I am here with three people, four people. Please, dear man of God, do not leave sleep. The one person you are training is equivalent to a nation. A competitive spirit is cancerous. Literally, medically cancerous. It will destroy you. Anything that will not give me sleep, may God not bring it around my life. Are we together? Yes. Be content with the car you have now while trusting God for a greater one. A greater one will come, but drive the one you have with pride and don't let nobody bully you. Be content with the house you have now. Don't worry. Be content with the one cloth, the one shirt you have now. Man of God, be content with the 50 faithful members that God has given you. Serve them with all your heart. Now, let me say this before we find a place to pray. If I were that overcomer who was giving you the lessons, I will add one more. Learn from scars and learn from crowns. If you learn from victorious people alone, you did not learn well. There is something only pain can teach. There is something only failure can teach. Please, I want you to listen to me. I give you this as a bonus principle and then we pray we live in a world today that downplays those who have failed and focuses on those who have succeeded the person who has failed knows something that the successful person may never know believe me there is something that a woman who had three children immediately after nine months there's something she can teach you but there is something only the woman who knows the pain of barrenness can teach you. You must learn to learn from people who have failed and have remained. Not just those who have succeeded. The person who has failed and refused to give up is as powerful a teacher as the person who has succeeded. Is someone learning now? If I were that overcomer in this teaching and I had the privilege to teach you I will add number nine and that would be learn from scars as well as crowns I 
I know you are a man of God and you have experienced miracles and explosion spreading your branches all over there is something you can teach us but I also want to hear from the man who has only pastored 10 members for 10 years and has not given up there is a kind of wisdom only that man can bring are we together yes I want to learn from the woman who gave birth immediately and the one who waited 20 years both of them have something to tell me I want to learn from the man who never had an opportunity to be educated but he was able to raise three or four children not just the CEO who became a billionaire at 19 both of them have something to tell me can I tell you do not fall prey to the mistake that many have made do not just respect successful people alone respect those who have failed and are still standing when a man fails and refuse to give up there is something he has and he can tell you is someone learning the one who is very wealthy can teach you financial principles but the one who has little can teach you joy and gratitude in the midst of little you need to learn from both of them the wealthy man may not be able to sleep if he loses one billion but the person who has stayed having little and knows how to sleep can teach you how to find rest when things do not work most believers ignore people who have scars alone without a crown not knowing that the road to the throne is the cross when we get to heaven i have taught you among the many ways we know jesus it's not just the crown on his head. He's not the only one with a crown. The 24 elders have crowns. The saints will be given crowns. But there is only one who has a kind of scar that no one can replicate. That scar is what brands him as savior. Not everybody can show you their crown. But if they can show you their scar, respect them. The man does not have a car. But he has trekked with his children from primary school until they are now in university. Let him teach you how to be joyful without things. There is something he can teach you. I learn from everyone. The Bible says go to the ants and learn. They have something to teach you. When I meet a man who has failed and is crying, I tell him what can you teach me? When I meet a man who has succeeded exceptionally, I tell him what, what can you teach me? I do not learn only from victors. I learn from those who are testaments of endurance. They have failed. They can teach you how not to fail. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and raise that are Hearts always hunger for Oh, our hearts always It is not only elderly people that can teach Children can also teach Elderly people can never become children again But children have a chance to become elderly people Respect them They have the advantage of time Elderly people can have wisdom but there is no time to correct certain mistakes again but children have the advantage of time they can be Saul today and become Paul tomorrow respect it I've visited the prison many times and we have various projects to the prison and I am inspired sometimes beyond imagination as I see these inmates some of them have come to a point where they have admitted their wrongs do you know there was a time that we wanted to help out to bail a few people who had been there for a long time and the the controllers advised us that they have learned from experience that some of these people have no family they are better off there even if you bail them they will not go because it has become their family they are better off in that place so when you sit down with that person and you ask him what do you have to teach me he will tell you listen to instructions 
I was teaching, I'm wrapping up now. I was teaching at a youth session, my final session in South Africa this year. And I just decided to inspire some of the people, the youths within the nation there as a final session. And I just want to borrow an example as I wrap up. And I told them I was going to simulate a discussion between an elderly you and a younger you. If the 10 year old you meets with the 50 year old you and they discuss, what will be their discussion? Will it be well done? You are what I always wanted to be or something is wrong. I wish I could go back. I have told you that at the end of your life, you will always be remembered, only be remembered by the problems you created or the ones you solved. There are many of you who right now are in that conversation. If the 10 year younger version of you looks at the you now, you will watch him bleed. And he says, this is not what I wanted to become. This was not our discussion. What happened? Now that you are alive, you can make the you now to celebrate with the you that is waiting in your 20 years from now. That 10, 20 years from now, you can look back to this version of you and say, well done. I made the wrongs right. I built the relationships. I got my life back in order. I'm praying for you that the 70, 80 year old version of you will not turn back and watch the younger version crying and say, I kept calling your attention. When you were 30, I said you were missing it. You did not listen. You got to 40, I said you were missing it. You did not listen. Now you are 80 and you are full of regrets. There are many elderly people today who are going to their graves in pain. They made certain mistakes. And watch this. This is the conclusion of my discourse tonight. The man who is sitting today as an overcomer is not always smiling. Sometimes they cry even on the throne because they remember in regret opportunities missed. Some of these principles that they did not adhere to. I was sent by that overcomer to you to tell you the mistake you are making has been made by someone and the end of it is not joy. You have a chance to correct it now. The lack of wisdom that you are doing now, someone has done it for you already. He finally became an overcomer. But there are things, the man called Abraham, even though he was a patriarch of faith, don't forget, Ishmael came and Ishmael fought Isaac. He still fights Isaac till today. And so the lesson from the overcomer called Abraham is that impatience will always make you give birth to what fights your promise. Make sure you don't just say, I am a seed of Abraham. Learn from the pain of the patriarch. If you were to meet with David today, David will tell you that I was a great man after my God's heart, but there were mistakes I made with my life. Do not make that mistake. How about Solomon the wise? You will see him seated today. And if you were to see Solomon, he will tell you, read the book of Ecclesiastes for the next one month. And he will cry while he's saying it. Read the book of Ecclesiastes and give it to every successful person to read. That of writing many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness to the body. But this is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, he said, for this is the whole duty of man. If you were to meet the man Paul, seated as an overcomer, he will say, I have a message for you. Know God early. Know God early. It will save you a lot of problems. Know God early. If you were to meet Esau and meet Jacob, they would tell you, do not sell your destiny for a pottage of stew. It is not worth it. Do not sell your birthright because you are hungry. Endure. Your birthright is greater than your hunger today. And then, if you sit and watch the greatest overcomer of all times, he's called the king of kings. He seated himself upon that throne. Let me tell you what he will tell you. Come unto me, 
all ye that are heavy laden and are weary and he will tell you I can give you rest rest from yesterday rest from pain rest from misery rest from curses I can give you rest he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light you shall find rest indeed for your soul take my yoke upon you if you meet the overcomer he will tell you no matter how your sins are I paid that price for you as proof of love you may not be able to do anything about yesterday but you can start afresh today and make meaning with your today for a great tomorrow we are surrounded by overcomers they are called a great cloud of witnesses I've been assigned by the Spirit to glean from their wisdom and to share with you tonight irrefutable destiny defining principles that have turned ordinary men to become champions hoping that soon enough in your lifetime you will have a chance to sit upon this rare throne that not many sit on as an overcomer yourself that your name will be turned from Joshua Selman to an overcomer from Mary from grace to an overcomer that people will look at you and indeed you will be called an overcomer please rise up on your feet please hold the hands of someone by your left and right I am victorious I have overcome 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 Whilst you are holding the hands of your neighbor left and right I want you to pray a very simple sincere prayer from the depth of your heart you're going to say Lord cause my neighbor to become an overcomer that they do not ignore this lesson that has come from the pain of overcomers go ahead that is your only prayer for tonight pray for your neighbor Staking the pain and the sorrow away You've given me peace undeniable There's no need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything Oh man, my Sing it Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah. Father, cause my brother, my sister, cause my neighbor to learn this profound destiny altering lessons from the overcomer. From Abraham, the overcomer, Paul, the overcomer, Jesus, the greatest of all overcomers. From our fathers who have become overcomers. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. For many of you who have been wounded in life and destiny, you have felt like you have failed and failed and failed and failed and failed. I'm speaking by the Spirit of the living God that every negative voice that has spoken to you that you will never emerge, you will never become, may that voice be silenced now. For those of you who have made all kinds of mistakes around your life and destiny, and you are wondering whether it's worth continuing the journey, I bring you glad tidings. There is hope for a tree. Even if it be cut off at the scent of water, receive grace to keep going. Receive grace to keep going. Receive grace to keep going. Grace to keep going. I pray for you, for everyone who has ignored hitherto, any of these eight lessons that we have today learned from the overcomer, I pray for grace that you will retrace your steps. Grace to take the wisdom of the overcomer seriously. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you that every power that wants to fight your becoming an overcomer in experience, becoming an inspiration to all around you, and to younger generations, I'm praying that that power is cleared out of the way. I call you by faith and by grace an overcomer. Your life will become an inspiration to many people. Your life will become a motivation to many people. In the name of Jesus Christ. That from today people will look at your life and the energy to continue will be imparted upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me make the altar call now. You heard the message that I brought you from the chiefest overcomer himself. Please keep standing. Let's just honor the altar call. We're done in a minute or two. You have heard Abraham's perspective. Paul's perspective. Joshua Selman's perspective. But Jesus himself calls on you. And this, the chiefest of all overcomers, in fact, the reason why there are all other overcomers, he's calling you to make it right with him tonight. It doesn't matter what has gone right or wrong in your life, ladies and gentlemen. When you come to Jesus, he gives you an opportunity to make it right. I want to call two groups of people in one right now. Two groups of persons. Number one, those who are making this decision for the first time. You're saying, Apostle... I will do myself a disservice to ignore this call not after the things that i've heard today and then number two the second group are people who are saying i need to rededicate my life as you kept reading the list i found out that i was a victim of almost all of them i have almost all through my life ignored the counsel of this overcomer and I want to make it right. I'm going to count one to five. Leave wherever you are and literally run. Come and stand before me as I lead you to make this decision and to encounter this overcomer. Please may I request that you stand so there will be space. I'm counting now. One. Let's honor them as they come. Two. Come. Come, don't be ashamed. The overcomer calls you. Regardless your past, regardless yesterday, regardless your limitations, he gives you a new opportunity. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till the Christ is formed in me. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, thank you. Thank you for making this noble decision. You're joining them. Please hurry up. It's my joy and honor to introduce to you the overcomer, Jesus himself, the captain of our salvation, 
the one who sits at the right hand of the father he calls you into a functional relationship the Bible says as many as will come to him he will in no wise cast away may I request that you lift your right hand please high above your head as a sign of surrender and say this after me believe it whilst you say it say Lord Jesus I have heard your word I come to you just as I am I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive your life and I declare that eternal life is in my spirit now I declare that you are my Savior you are my Lord you are my King I also declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I am a child of God from tonight and I live the victorious Christian life amen father thank you for these blessed ones they have lifted their hands declaring your lordship over their lives I'm praying for them in the name of Jesus that the grace to walk as a true believer may that grace be released upon you and by the authority of scripture the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life in jesus mighty name i pray amen please may i request that you move to my right there are counselors waving the placard they will have a word with you very quickly and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go thank you so very much thank you so very much koinoni are you still clapping Hallelujah. All right, while standing, just a quick announcement, and then I'll speak a final blessing on your life, and we're done. Thank you for your patience. This is coming from the media department. The media and productions department is now open for new members. Um, all interested persons should send their applications to media at koinoniaglobal.org. Media at koinoniaglobal.org. They are particularly looking for competent people in the following area, visual mixing, video editing, good writing skills, videography, photography, graphic designs, projection, broadcast, and production. So God has graced you in any of these areas too well to apply, and you can get to a PR desk after the grace, and um, there'll be a uh, more information I'm told that the application closes in two weeks by the 26th of November the doors will be closed so take this um, as an opportunity to serve in the house of God next is from the ushering department the ushering department is also open for new members interested persons should send the application to koinonia ushers as one word at gmail.com or you can put in writing your application addressed to the head of department, um, the head of the ushering department. The application closes on the 15th, 15th of November. Hallelujah. And then, like I said, Cote d'Ivoire, I hope you are ready. Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm in Cote d'Ivoire. It's going to be an awesome time. It's a joy to bring the word of life to... Um, the francophone nations and then thursday 16th and 17th i'm with the four square preaching at their um, convention and then same on friday the 17th um same day we'll rush and we'll, i'll be in portacourt for one session just one session with house on the rock portacourt and then i'll be back hallelujah have you been blessed tonight in the name of jesus i pray for you by reason of that which you have learned today, I impart the grace upon you to walk as an overcomer. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, as you apply these wisdom keys, I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart that you will experience extraordinary results in life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, may my God bless you. May my God lift you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 
I prophesy to you that it is well with you. The week beginning will be one of your best weeks this year. You will find favor. You will find honor. The Lord will give you speed. No weapon fashioned against you will prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, you go from glory to glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Together let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday.